What is going on guys? It's Ion LaRue here. Today is Monday and there is tech news to talk about. So let's do just that. So yeah guys, today we're going to be talking about some of the more of the latest news in technology including news from Apple, Staples, Nvidia, and Canon. So let's go. So yeah guys, I thought I'd change it up a little bit and actually ask you guys to subscribe now, which you can do right here. I'm going to be doing an exciting new video next week where I do my review of the Razer Naboo. Is it a wearables you really want to buy? Tune in next week to find out. So Canon is back at the camera game again and this time they're upping the pixel level again. Now the pixel where it kind of settled down for a while most of the camera manufacturers were staying at about the same range of 25 to 30 megapixels ish and that was okay because they were improving sensors, improving image quality, helping with glass which is lenses and overall just creating better images from the cameras and existing camera bodies. Well now that has changed because Canon has come out with the 5DS and 5DSR with a whopping 50.6 megapixels. So what all can you get out of this? Well, the increased megapixels provides higher clarity, better low light resolution, and just a better image. But unfortunately it only shoots 1080p and 720 in varying high speeds. Unfortunately no 5K, which is kind of interesting when you look at the price point of these things. Even more expensive than the Canon Mark 5D 3, which was one of the top end cameras for Canon's DSLR line before these cameras came out. And those cameras are just the bodies themselves. That does not include glass at all. Now Canon has come out with some very nice lenses for these as well, but that's going to set you back several hundred dollars to several thousand dollars more. So Canon is here with new cameras and it'll be interesting to see. Nothing that I'm going to be buying anytime soon, but for those who are actual professional photographers, what you can get out of a 50.6 megapixel camera if you're looking for long away shots with still a very high resolution or even something for a very close up, just you'll be able to do a lot more with 50 megapixels instead of 30. So it'd be cool to see what people can get out of these cameras. And secondly, let's talk about Apple. So Apple has released a new app called Photos, but why did they do this? Well, they killed iPhoto and they killed Aperture. So they took their really low end and their very high end and kind of smashed them together in an app that they call Photos and are releasing that. And so I haven't played with it yet, but from what reviewers are saying, it's a combination of higher end, a little bit higher end, so you can have a little bit more editing tools, very high integration with iCloud in the input and exportation of the photos that you edit, easier ways to swipe through and navigate through large photo libraries, and overall just a very simplified app, very integrated with all your devices, integrated with Yosemite, and a very similar UI layout to the Yosemite app. So it'll be interesting to see how effective this tool is. I hope to download it and play with it a little bit. For me, I don't use iPhoto that much at all. I typically just store my photos on a drive and then if I need to edit them, I'll edit them with Adobe Photoshop. But for those who want just a simple built-in app from Apple for navigating their photo libraries and for editing, Photos is here to stay. And next let's talk about Staples. Now Staples, one of the largest retail stores for office supplies technology, mainly office supplies and other things, actually made a huge announcement. They are purchasing Office Depot, another one of the largest retail chains of office supplies here in the US. So they are going to be pulling them in. This deal isn't going to be finalized until the end of 2015, but they're going to be cutting a lot of jobs, pulling their stores in, probably rebranding them as Staples, although they might be, it might still be Office Depot owned by Staples. Um, but it's going to be supposedly cutting down a lot of the waste of the company, unifying it, and just pulling it into the Staples brand. So this is a huge move. I mean, it, it almost it almost doubles Staples existing retail footprint across the United States. It pulls in a huge website, a fairly large buying market, and I'm sure a lot of contracts as well as IT support, um, ink refilling, a lot of other things that Office Depot offers is now all going to be owned by Staples. So it'll be interesting to see how this affects the retail giant, but probably in a very positive way in the fact that they now have far more stores and far more places to sell their equipment. So 
right on Staples. And finally, let's talk about GTX 970. Now, I might have mentioned this before, but NVIDIA has been caught in what some people are saying a lie, other people are saying a miscommunication. What it was was that the 970 was released with what people were calling 4 gigs of GDDR5 video memory. So that's 4 gigs of dedicated memory just to video buffering on the card itself. Now the way NVIDIA does it is they stack their different cards. The lower end cards are a completely different chipset entirely, but the higher end ones are typically the highest end tier step down and they'll take away parts of it to make it a little bit less powerful and then price it at that lower price point. So the higher end ones are complete full top of the line chips and then as you step down they have little things disabled with them to make them a little bit less powerful or whatever to make them at that lower price point. So what Nvidia had done is taken a 980, stepped down, taken some RAM chips off, some ROPs and just kind of halved it, not quite at the knees, but kind of at the ankles for how much this device could do. Well, they advertised it at 4 gig, but well, now that this card has been out in the wild for a while, people are starting to find out that it's not 4 gig at all. It's actually 3.5 gig at full speed, and then when it hits that final half gig, it dramatically throttles down. Now, this isn't going to be affecting everyone. For most of the general users, unless you're doing a ton of 4K content, like extreme ultra high definition gaming or whatever, you're probably not going to see this throttling because for most people hitting a 3.5 or 4 gig frame buffer or maxing out your video RAM is not something you're normally going to do. But when you do hit that 4 gig, you're actually going to start to see a little bit of stuttering and a little bit of slowing down. So Nvidia is forced to start coming back with saying, you know, if you want to get yours replaced with something else, we'll be happy to do that. We're trying to work with the customers to make them as happy as possible. We apologize. This was a miscommunication with our PR department and with our actual hardware solutions department, you know, the people who actually make the chips and who know what the real specs are. And it's just interesting to see because uh, it's hard to think that Nvidia would release a card and someone in the company wouldn't say, no, that PR is not right. That's not what this card actually does. We actually limited it at 3.5 gig and the fourth gig is kind of buffered just because that's the way it was when we chopped it down in half from the 980 and the 990 and the Titans. So it'll be interesting to see how people respond. AMD is definitely getting their cracks in at this one. They released this little beauty right here, making a joke with their card being four gig strong all the way through all four gigs and NVIDIA comes back with, even at 3.5 gigs, our card is faster. So AMD is sensing blood in the water and they're trying to make the best of it and NVIDIA is scrambling to keep themselves up as the upper dog and it's just interesting to see. I think even with this little snafu, NVIDIA has a long way to fall before they ever really get in, before AMD ever really gets in range of really taking them down. AMD has a long way to go and NVIDIA has always been a very big pioneer in the video games market, but it's just kind of sad to say that they would release a card like that with that information and not think that the hardware reviewers wouldn't call them out on this. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. So yeah guys, that's some of the latest news in technology. Let me know in the comment box down below what did you think about what I talked about today. Canon's new camera with a 50 megapixel sensor on it. Or the NVIDIA 970. Do you have one? Have you heard of other friends who have one? What do you think about it being crippled like that with it's saying it's supposed to be 4 gig, but only really functioning well at 3.5 gig. Let me know in the comment box down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Remember you can check out last week's episode right here, what I talked about right here. Remember hit that like and subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my new content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!